Hey, this is Greg Steer. Uh, welcome to an on the road edition to Gospelize. I'm here with Dr. Stan Pons, president of Florida Bible College, as well as the president of Make It Clear Ministries. Stan, thank you so much for being a part of this. I am honored to be a part of a program where a person and his ministry is taking a stand for the accuracy, the clarity, and the urgency of the gospel. Thank you. You bet. That's awesome. Um, you know, you, I met you, I, didn't, I actually don't know if I met you, I heard you speak mm -hmm. at Florida Bible College Camp. Yes. That was in Hollywood, Florida. I was 11 years old. <laughs> it was a middle school and high school camp. I begged, borrowed, uh, I didn't steal, but I did everything I could, even though I was still elementary school, they wouldn't mm -hmm. let me in. Right. To talk, my youth leader let me go. We took a two and a half day trip on a school bus, unair conditioned, mm -hmm. in August mm -hmm. from Denver, Colorado to Hollywood, Florida, which is basically Miami. Yeah. And we were there. Uh, and I think a couple thousand teenagers yes. for a week mm -hmm. um, listen to music and speaking and preaching and doing evangelism, and it rocked my world. You were one of the speakers there, and it you did a sermon called Fishers of Men, and I bought the tape series and wore them out listening to it. So you're one of the guys that really fully equipped me. Yankee Arnold and Stan Pons mm. uh, equipped me to share... Share the gospel of Christ. Tell me, tell me a little bit. How did you? How did you get saved? How did you get involved with Florida Bible mm -hmm. uh, College? Yep. Sure, I'll be glad to. Story. I grew up in a home where we never had a Bible. We never said grace. I, I'd hear the Lord's name when my dad hit his finger with a hammer or something, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And they always would say, good boys go to heaven, bad boys go to hell. And I can remember dad telling me how bad I was. I know that sounds like, like a cliche and everybody uses it, but it's really true. But I also was a person who, deep in my heart, I was wondering, is there a heaven, is there a hell? And if there is a hell, I don't want to go there. If there's a heaven, I want to go there. But how do I get there? Mm. I prayed that, that that afternoon, and I said, Lord, and I was in surfing and all that, so I was afraid of dying and drowning. So I said, oh, God, I want to know, how do I go to heaven? I'm sitting in the classroom, and a gal in the classroom, she says, you know, they're going to have what is known as a fifth quarter. It was four quarters of the football, fifth quarter was the youth meeting. Anybody want to go? And then nobody was answering, so she then looked at me and said, Stan, do you want to go? And here was this good-looking gal in high school and asking this weird old guy, you know, does you? And I said, absolutely. She picked me up, but it wasn't missionary dating. Um, she she came in a Corvair Monza, hmm. and she had her girlfriend sit in the front seat. I got in the back. We went to the ball game, and then I kind of said, why don't we go home? She said, but you promise. I said, okay. Hmm. I knew something was wrong when we pulled into the parking lot mm. because there was cars everywhere. Then I was really surprised. We threw open the door to get in. They were already started. Wall-to-wall -wall kids on the floor like carpeting. There was a music and across the front of the room, from one end of the room to the other, were guitar players, and they were very vibrant. They were singing. The kids were singing. It was like, I've never experienced anything like this. Mm. Then the speaker, Ray Stanford, got up there. And then on an old bar stool with a well-worn Bible, he explained to us, that the Bible can be trusted historically, prophetically, scientifically. So now I'm listening to him talk about a Bible that I can really trust. And then he went into the simple plan of salvation, that we're all sinners, and that by faith alone we can have our sins forgiven and have a home in heaven. The best part of it, though, was when it was all over, the girl who invited me, as the kids were spilling out to play volleyball late in the evening because it was after the ball game, she said, Stan, did what that man say from the Bible makes mm. sense to you? And I said, yes. Now, she didn't just say, great, high five and let's go. She said, well, then let me ask you a question. Here's a little pamphlet. It says, check below what you think is necessary to get you to heaven. So I went through that whole list and I thought, no one would put this together. It's got to be all these good works. And I checked them all off. She was so good. She didn't say, ah, you failed this thing. No, she said, you know, none of those things can get you to heaven. But on the back, it tells you what can. And there was a Bible verse mm. that said that God so loved the world that if you'd believe in him, you wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. She said, would you like to trust Christ right now? And that night I trusted Christ. Wow. Now the best part was when I got back to school, I started telling my friends about it. Sure, you got, you know, persecution university thing going on, you know, but I came back the next week and then the next week. And then from then on, she said that I caught fire for the Lord that night and I never mm. quit burning. The funny part was when I went home that night, my dad waited up, rough, tough, hard to die for construction guy. And he said, where were you? And I said, I went to a Bible study. 
you went to a Bible study. What did you learn there? And I looked at him and I said, Dad, I learned I'm going to heaven. You're going to hell. You know, and I'll tell you, that was my first person I ever witnessed to. And I have to tell you, my dad and I danced around the dining room table as he was. Hey, what are you doing? Later on, he came to faith in Christ. I want to end this story um, with a, a positive thought. That girl that invited me out two weeks ago was my wife of 51 years. Oh, congratulations. So there, there you was. Go. Now, she didn't do it to get a husband. I didn't do it to get a wife. But I'm going to tell you, we began together, even in high school, to serve the Lord. Wow. So that's my that's brief really story. That's really cool. So, so you, I love it because she, we, we call it a dare to share, the reverse altar call. She, she didn't just depend on Ray to right. give you the gospel, give the invitation. Right. She asked you, hey, what did you think? So it's like almost outside of that, hey, what did you think? And she watched you through the gospel. I think for the youth leaders listening right now, I mean, get your teens equipped to follow up. You give the gospel during your youth leader session, but then have your teens take their friends they invited out and say, hey, what did you think mm -hmm. of what the youth leader said? And then boom, they're in a gospel conversation just like Carol was with you. She did, and she was so wise because she didn't just say, did you like what he had to say? You know, yeah, what? what? He talked for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. What? She said, did what he say from the Bible about how to go to heaven, mm. did that make sense to you? Now, she didn't pad it by saying how to go to heaven by just trusting Christ, because yeah. then I could have said, well, I trusted Christ. So she left that out so yeah. she could take my temperature to make sure if I really understood it. That's great. That's great. So you get saved. Um, you meet a girl in the process. Yes. We've been blessed in, in heaven least with all the heavenly <laughs> blessings, right? Yes. Um, and then you, how do you get introduced to um, sharing the gospel, you know, equipped to do that. What what was the next step after that? Very good. There's a, a multiple of steps, but I would have to say the very first step was the consistent and clear, consistent is, is the most important word, presentation of the gospel each week by my youth leader. Mm. So I kept hearing again and again and again and again. So you kept going back to that. Oh, every, week. every week. So what, just along with that, what mm. would you say to the youth leaders listening, why it's important to consistently give the gospel uh, in youth group on a week in and week out basis. Because it's highly likely that students won't be like me. That first time I heard it, boom, I trust your Christ. Mm -hmm. More cases than not, they're gonna go on a faith discovery journey, but they need to hear the same message again and again. Now you may talk about different topics, but you gotta bring it back to the gospel mm -hmm. and it cannot change, all right? So then me hearing it, then I trust your Christ, but youth leaders need to give it every week. Now, let me talk about me, okay? Next couple of weeks later, the youth leader then spent a great deal of time talking about science and the Bible. That gave me the confidence to stand up for Christ mm -hmm. with the Bible. And now, because I kept hearing how he gave the gospel over and over and over again, I began to share it the same way. Mm. I made sure people knew they were sinners, that God still loved them, and that going to heaven they had to be perfect, but they couldn't. And it basically the gospel in six mm. words that Dare to Share so often uses. So you, you hear it week in and week out. You, in the process, uh, you learn how to share your faith clearly. Mm -hmm. So we talk at Dare to Share, we talk about gospel urgency, Talk about gospel fluency, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. which is being fluent in that message. You get that urgency, get that fluency. Um, when did you begin to uh, actively share the gospel in high school? Was it soon after that? Yes. I trusted Christ on a Thursday night. There was no school on Friday because it was the um, Veterans Day weekend back in those days. As soon as I got to school on Monday, I couldn't wait to tell people. Mm. Again, not every kid is going to be like me. Yeah. I'm not your model, but it's what happened. And I was so glad that I did. Now, the fun thing was is that when the kids did challenge me and I didn't have answers, I went back to the youth group and I either asked to get those answers because I thought, well, you know what? It's not stupid to not know an answer the first time. Mm -hmm. It's stupid to not know the answer the second time. Yep. You know? So, so you got to learn apologies you gotta learn as you go. As, as we go. So <clears throat> you're, you're part of this gospel advancing youth ministry mm -hmm. that is all about reaching young people with the gospel. Mm -hmm. Uh, today, I, I would say that from what I've seen, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. You've spoken to youth ministries across the United States. Typical youth ministries are about the meeting and about kind of, you know, the Christian kids in that mm -hmm. meeting, but not necessarily about mobilizing those young people. How did it make you feel 
to know you're part of a youth ministry that was really not just about pouring into you. They did mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. but also about mobilizing you for a cause. How did that make you feel as a young person? A couple of things that, that really made me feel more confident about my faith, making me feel that I wasn't alone. Those were important. Mm-hmm. So we had the one youth group, but they partnered with not all the youth groups in town, but they partnered with the youth groups that had the same value of the gospel, its clarity, and its proclamation. Mm-hmm. Then in addition to all of that, they knew that just hearing it from the, from the front, from the whatever it is, the podium, it doesn't really matter. You've got to take the kids out. Mm-hmm. So they would then, during special seminars that they would have on a Saturday, not every week, but every maybe six months, they'd do an evangelism mm-hmm. training thing. And so they'd show us how to do the, go- do the gospel. We did it with ourselves, one another, and then they would throw us into the water, mm-hmm. in a sense. They'd take us out doing this. As petrified as we were, I have to tell you, that's what sealed the deal mm-hmm. in my own heart, that it can be done. So, yep, I won one. I didn't. The other kids are all with me. And Dare to Share is so cool at that because they take the kids out when they're they're able to go out and do this in in public, and they take them out. I was a part of the Dare to Share live a number number of times, but when they come back in, if you recall how you guys do this, give the microphone to the kids who are giving the gospel for the first time. Well, obviously, we all think they'll never do that. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's wrong. They do it, and mm-hmm. they will share. Now, of course, some kids, it uh, didn't happen with me, didn't go well, and we all applauded them because mm-hmm. we're part of Persecution mm-hmm. University. But it was those kids that maintained mm-hmm. their passion for evangelism. Yeah, I agree. And and so youth, you're part of this youth ministry called Youth Ranch, Christian right? Youth Ranch, mm-hmm. and did you feel like, because there were several of these, t- tell a little of the story yeah, about sure, the history of sure. Christian Youth Ranch and how it kind of turned into a movement it that turned into Florida Bible College. Absolutely. It started with a man who really wanted to give the gospel to teenagers. He was kind of wired that way, and mm-hmm. he did it in his home, and it began to grow. And then he reminded the kids that, you know what, it's not about you, it's about reaching the world. So many of them caught the, the vision of the calling to go mm-hmm. into ministry, so they went to a Bible college, not Florida Bible College. And then he started Florida Bible College, and then from those, almost immediately, those kids that were graduating said, you know, here, it's in Miami, okay? Let's, let's have a Bible study over here. Let's do a ranch over here. Let's do a ranch in that little community around Miami. And then when the kids graduated, they would say, you know what? I don't think there's one in St. Petersburg or Atlanta or Denver, as mm-hmm. you well know. And so now they went across the country. Well, now they wanted to get the kids more excited. So they brought them to a central location in the summer, which was the Florida Bible College camps that you went to. But then at Christmas, and Easter in the area of the camp, like Denver or whatever, they'd have a Christmas camp or they'd have a snow camp or they'd have a whatever, but they use this as a central location. So Florida Bible College, when it began, it really began to train young guys and gals in sharing the gospel and then helping other teenagers come to faith in Christ. And so now that's the youth ranch movement. So it was it was a movement. And I, mm-hmm. I just remember Stan going there, seeing a couple thousand kids at the Florida Bible College camp we got trained. We got trained in the morning how to share the gospel. Correct. That's why I heard you speak. Mm-hmm. Afternoon, there was a, a boardwalk, Hollywood Beach Hotel, which was where Florida Bible College purchased. It had a portion of the boardwalk, which means they had their own beach, mm-hmm. and everybody had access uh, across, you know, from Miami to Hollywood to walk through that boardwalk. Absolutely, which made evangelism really easy. Yep. Just walk out your door and there they are. There you go, and so. The afternoon doing that. The night we tell stories, give testimonies, and be inspired. Mm-hmm. And really, that week long of camp, mm-hmm. I think, planted the seeds down deep in my soul mm-hmm. that would someday sprout to become Dare to Share. Because I remember thinking, oh my goodness, 2,000 teenagers trained, equipped, and mobilized at the same time for a week. And they didn't have all the other music coming in. They didn't have the world and it wasn't like we were against the world. We're in the world, but they kind of brought them away from all that video TV and all that stuff and just concentrated. Now you I'm going to ask you a question. I think and see if if it happened when you came to camp, two and a half days, you got here to camp. Okay, got that. On the way home, it could take you three days to get home. Why? Because when the kids got out to do a bathroom break or they got at a gas station, they went to whatever, oh, yeah. we they were evang- witnessing We evangelized. Yeah. From Hollywood, Florida to Denver, Colorado, we were sharing Christ right and left. And I I felt like, you know, I was a confused kid raised in a very broken home, 
but and went got involved in this Christian youth ranch in Colorado. Mm-hmm. It was a youth ranch again, just another name for a, a youth group. But this mm-hmm. thing was kind of a movement of youth. Yes, groups. it was. It was a gospel advancing mindset. You were there if you wanted to become part of a leadership team. You had to know how to share your faith, and you had to be doing it. Mm-hmm. And you had to be making disciples. It wasn't just about you know showing up and reading your Bible. You would do that. I mean, I learned systematic theology when I was a a, a kid. Yeah, there. But it was, but it wasn't just about growing deep. It was about going wide. And for me, as an urban kid that never knew my father, I get involved now. I got a, I got a tribe. I got a king. I got mm-hmm. a cause. I got mm-hmm. a crew. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm locked and loaded, ready to go. Yep. And that movement spread across the United States. And I, again, I think the reason I'm doing Dare to Share today is because of. Uh, Christian Youth Ranch, mm-hmm. uh, Yankee Arnold, who started that Christian Youth Ranch in Arvada, Colorado, and Stan Ponds and Florida Bible uh, College and Camp, that stirred that in down deep in my soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it was, I mean, it was mm-hmm. a movement. Mm-hmm. Um, if I've ever been part of a movement, it, mm-hmm. it was there. Uh, swept across the nation. I feel, Stan, that today um, that same movement can happen again. Uh, across the nation, across the globe, because I still feel a lot of kids, they're twitching. They, they, they mm-hmm. want that king, that cause, and that mm-hmm. crew. King mm-hmm. Jesus, mm-hmm. all authority in heaven and earth has been given me the cause. Go and make disciples the crew. Lo, I'm with you always to the very end mm-hmm. of the age. Um, do you believe that? I do. And if you look at the teenagers, since I'm from Florida and all that, you'll see, remember those that high school that was shot up in South Florida, all those kids were killed? Yeah. I mean, just another, that's another day in the life, so to speak. And all of a sudden, boom, the, the shooters come in. Mm. Within a week, those same kids, inside of them, like I said, inside their chest beats a heart of a radical, mm. of an activist, I'll use a better term. Mm. And so it took these little nerdy kind of kids that says, we're going to go for this gun control. And they went from a, a boring classroom to Congress yeah. because of a cause that they had. Mm-hmm. In it. Now, I'm not here to give you, is it right or wrong? The point is, is that what's inside of a teenager. So if you do give them well, a king, a cause, and a crew... Yeah. They will do it. They well, want to do that. And we're seeing it now with the protests that, you know, happened over George Floyd's um, murder. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, you know, we've seen protests just, you yes. know, erupt across the United States. We're seeing uh, policies change. We're seeing, you know, uh, uh, conversations with police departments. We're seeing all stuff, good and bad and ugly. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff happening. But the point is, uh, is how do we mobilize teenagers for you know, this cause that really can strike at the root of evil. Henry David Thoreau said, for every thousand hacking at the leaves of evil, one strikes at the root. Mm-hmm. And the root of evil uh, is is sin. Um, racism is, in the words of Dr. Tony Evans, isn't a bad habit. It's, it's a sin. And the answer is not sociology. It's theology. The mm-hmm. theology of the gospel can transform uh, racist hearts can transform hate-filled hearts can can transform uh, uh potential shooters at a at a public high school um that gospel message is the core for transformation so mobilizing teenagers for this cause that's what we do at dare to share but that's also what you're doing with florida bible florida college Man. just a little bit about florida bible college I now I, I want to do that i just want to go back for a moment for the person that's saying how, how do we how do we get this thing so I, First of all, everything that Greg just mentioned, if you are an influencer of teenagers, and I say that because it can be a, a teacher, it could be a youth leader, it could be a pastor. If you're an influencer in a position of influence, whether it's a title or you're actually in there doing something, you're influencing teenagers, to mobilize them, you got to be mobilized. Mm. You have got to have this in your heart. When they cut your wrist, you have to bleed the same thing, which is, again, the urgency, accuracy, clarity, fluency of the gospel. It's the king. It's the crew. It's mm. all that you have together for the cause. Now, if you have it in you, you're going to be infectious like this virus, and you're going to go around other kids, and you know about that in your book. So you're going to touch others, but do you have it in you first? Yep. And if you do, then you're saying, okay, I have it in me, but I still need some pegs to hang on to dare to share.org is the place to go for all of that because it has all the material it's got a broad uh, uh, like a cafeteria of what to help you but they're also um, discerning enough to say okay there's a lot out there we'll even show you what you do first second third fourth fifth and it'll all be biblically based all right now that being said so what are we doing at florida bible college 
Well, we want to continue the same thing. We want to make sure that kids are going to still understand the gospel accurately and that they're going to be able to present it clearly and they're going to give it out courageously and compassionately but also consistently. And so if you're looking for a it's Bible... five C's he just threw in there. <laughs> I'm just saying preacher, preacher. That's pretty good. Yeah. I would have more in there, but we don't have a lot of time. Like also give it cheerfully too. But back to this. I would like you to know that if you'd like to get some Bible classes to start you on the road of knowing the Bible so that you can communicate it accurately and clearly, however you want to do that, I would encourage you to go to floridabiblecollege.com. floridabiblecollege.com. And when you do that, You'll get all the information of how to take classes online or on campus. We, Greg, now have, are launching this school year, this coming school year, a very hybrid program that is very unique. This program is like a gap year. We're taking six kids with two leaders, and for nine months, they are going to cruise through the United mm -hmm. States. They are um, already vetted in music, sports, and also filming because we have our film department as well. And so they're learning how to do that. So about every three weeks, they'll be at a different church and serving, not like, hey, we're the performers. You don't know anything. We know it all. No, we're coming in to serve you. But these are kids that have already caught that fever that you're talking mm -hmm. about in gospelizing. And so now they go from church to church to church, ministry to ministry to ministry. Between those and during the day, they're in classes online with those two teachers that are with them to be able to get that. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of nine months, then they also will do international. So we use mm -hmm. three words. One is they're equipped in the biblical education. And if you'd like to know what are those courses, they go anywhere from the survey of the Bible to theology, to doctrine, to evangelism, to discipleship, to spiritual life. So they have a deeper life. So education. The second is what we call ministry. Ministry is when the kids are doing something for other Christians. So we call ministry is to other Christians. The third is missions, where they actually are going to go nose to nose with lost people. Mm. Maybe starting in the urban areas, obviously safe areas, etc. But we want them to quote get dirty for God. Mm. In other words, not just sit in this holy huddle with other Christians mm. and sharing some Bible verses. Mm. All right, so those are the three in that special program. And so if our listeners are interested to know more about that program, all they need to do is to email us at tellmemore at floridabiblecollege.com. Tellmemore at floridabiblecollege.com. And so that's what we're doing there. If you want to know more about the Make It Clear Ministries, that is a wide ministry with a speaker team, speaker's team. We've got television programs, movies. We're, we're, we're filming all of that in our studio department. We've got also our media, which goes broad with all the things like we're doing similar now with you and many other things as well. Just simply go to Make It Clear. Dot org. Make it clear dot org. And they'll give you all the information you need there. Thank well, you for letting me be with you. Yeah, today. Stan, and I, uh, I appreciate the investment you made in me and then through me to mm -hmm. these youth leaders and s students of really making the gospel clear. Well, know? I'm grateful for Ray Stanford at the, in those days when he gave the gospel yeah. so faithfully for Yankee, who actually put together that fifth quarter. Yeah. Although he didn't uh, mm. teach it, he was the one that put that fifth quarter mm. together that I trusted Christ. And for guys like you, many of them, men and women that are standing strong, lasting long for Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Thanks so much, Stan.